Hey folks, Mark Emery here with the Lighthouse Law Club. I've got a very important message for you here today in this video. I urge you to pay very close attention. You know that we're very active in uh, building momentum to get after these bankers who are basically highway robbers. And I want to tell you right now that basically every mortgage foreclosure and tax sale foreclosure is based on fraud. This fraud is being uncovered and the people are organizing legal efforts to put these rats in a corner where they cannot escape. What I'm going to bring to you today is a recorded call from John Darash from the uh, National Liberty Alliance and he is spearheading an effort, a nationwide effort, for all people who have ever had a property lost to foreclosure or if you're currently involved in a proceeding to foreclose on your property, this information is for you. Basically what is happening is legal documents and research have been put together to basically force the criminal perpetrators into the courtroom where they have to respond. And John will explain the details relating to that and how they cannot escape the trap that we will set for them. All right. If you ever had a foreclosure, past, present, or even potentially in the future, this is a potential solution for you. We're going after the judges. If they even attempt to block, they will be uh, hung with RICO charges, racketeering influence, corrupt organizations, basically for denying you due process and acting in conspiracy to defraud you of your rights and property. Okay, I'm not going to get into a lot of details. I'll let John explain everything for you. Bottom line, if you've ever had a foreclosure or currently involved, you need to listen to this message. There is a remedy, and that's what we're bringing to you. Not only exposure of the fraud, but also the remedy. Here's John, and I'll have some comments for you at the tail end. All right? Uh, tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about foreclosures, uh, tax and mortgage foreclosures. In the past, uh, we've written some letters. We've tried to help people with mortgage problems and to try to save their, their homes. Um, we haven't been too successful on that. Uh, we've tried to uh, uh, warn the courts or, or you know, warn, allow, t tell the courts uh, of the crime and explain to them uh, the crime that was being taken by the mortgage uh, companies. Uh, but, of course, uh, they're part and parcel with these uh, mortgage uh, uh, violations uh, on the people by taking their homes. Um, and the whole system is set up against the people to rob them of their homes as soon as they start to fall behind, and in many cases, even when they don't fall behind. Um, same thing with the tax, uh, the tax foreclosures. Um, anyway, we have started, as uh, most people know, uh, we started the case up in Albany, New York here, which we've got quite a few cases going into there. Um, and we will be doing the habeas corpuses that we've already set forward. There's got to be at least 30 of them laying around that we need to, uh, that people are still in jail or people are still have lost, uh, don't have their children back. We're going to take those cases into the court. But we're also going to do the mortgage cases. As a matter of fact, we put something together that looks quite easy. It's a one-paper deal. It's a show cause directly into the court. When we started to look at this and reconsider trying to help people with mortgages again, we were going to go through a, uh, a different process of really a notice and demand and then setting forth for a default and then, and then giving them uh, you know, the ultimatum and then take them into the court. But as we were writing the papers, we started to realize, why are we going to go through all this exercise? Why don't we just go right into a show cause? And a show cause brings them into the court, and they have to respond. Um, and if it's a mortgage uh, company, and remember, we're not just going after the, uh, the mortgage companies or the towns, particularly the people uh, that are responsible for doing these things, like the tax collector uh, for the, uh, the tax foreclosures. And also there is also the, uh, I think it's the treasurer, the county treasurer, uh, that's responsible for the final foreclosure. And they're the ones that sign the paper. No judge's signature ever, ever signs the paper on any of these foreclosures because they try to keep their fingers off of it. And, and we've seen them pull all kinds of dirty tricks in order to keep their signatures off of that so they, they don't put themselves at risk. And uh, what we discovered here is to go after the top guy, whoever's responsible for all this stuff. Um, so if we can't get a judge that's responsible for the, the, this, and these papers are filed in the court, well, who's responsible? Well, uh, the answer is quite simple. 
ultimately uh, it is the chief judge. It's really the clerk uh, because the filing of a non-judicial foreclosure should not be permitted. Uh, but because it is a non-judicial foreclosure and because the clerk is totally ignorant to the process, uh, the judge is not. And if he is, shame on him anyway. That's his problem. Uh, so that's the guy we go after. So we will go after the chief, chief judges in whatever court system it is <clears throat> that is hearing this, <clears throat> whether it be a county court or, or some kind of a state court. Uh, those are usually the two courts that will hear these cases. And we'll go after the mortgage companies. Now, the mortgage companies, uh, you know, of course, they're, they're regular people, so they've got 30 days to answer. Uh, a show cause, the people are permitted 30 days if they're uh, served through the mail. And that's how we'll serve it. We'll serve it through certified mail. And uh, the, the, the judges, um, and a lot of these judges and people, I'm so surprised that they don't know, uh, but these are federal rules. We're in a federal court, and so we kind of understand that they don't know. I've been in federal courts, and I've watched these people squirm, and I've seen the federal judges flog these these uh, uh, people, you know, the lawyers that are coming in there from the state courts. Uh, they don't read the rules. They don't even read their own rules on the state level anyway. I see the same problem there, too. Uh, but these uh, federal judges don't like when you come in and don't look at their rules. Um, and so they don't even know that they've got 60 days. Uh, but that's what they do have, 60 days to answer. If they think they have 30 days to answer and they answer in 30, well, that's fine, too. But generally speaking, they will default. I know the tricks that they play. Uh, we've seen this already. They'll try to come in and have the case uh, thrown out. They'll try to find us for no standing. And we're taking, making maneuvers to prevent that. We've already set that stage up. Uh, but also the fact of the matter, if the judge tries to throw a case out, he's only going to get one case at a time, but he's not going to get 30 or 40 cases. And he will find himself as a defendant on the defendant's list because we've already warned that judge in our case right now. He's already been warned that this is a common law court running according to the rules of the common law. So this is a court of record. It's going to be decided by juries, not by an individual. There is no authority for the servant to judge the master. And, uh, and anything over $20, as the Constitution says, people get a trial by jury. And we are going to be starting indictments here. We're going to be communicating with uh, the, the new attorney general up there in uh, Washington, D.C., we will be copying the President of the United States on everything we're doing. Uh, and uh, from listening and watching, uh, it, it's just more and more obvious to me that he has been reading our stuff. And uh, just by what he's doing and some of the announcements and things I've heard about, but I haven't heard from his mouth yet, is very, very exciting concerning what's happening in the federal agencies and what's maybe happening in the courts. There's getting rid of these U.S. attorneys, which is normal. You know, it's par for the core. Uh, but that's what we do need. We need attorney. Uh, we need new, new U.S. attorneys coming in that's going to do the job. And we're going to start going after U.S. attorneys because they're part of the problem. Uh, we don't have a particular plan at the moment, but we're going to see how these new new, new uh, attorneys go. We have uh, uh, Parikh, uh, I forget what his other name is, Parikh something. Uh, that was the guy that, uh, you know, uh, decided that he, he wouldn't resign and he wanted the president to, uh, to fire him. And this just happened, I think, yesterday or over the weekend or something. Just recent. I just heard about it yesterday anyway. And um, he was, we heard a lot of good stuff about this guy. Uh, but he stopped short in a few places. You know, he's been going after his governor here in New York for three, four years now, and he hasn't made any real big moves on him. And uh, I don't know why. There's plenty out there on this guy. This guy should be in jail. There's no doubt about it. Uh, but uh, but he has gone after some big people, and he has taken some big people down. Uh, but we do need someone who's going to deal with even people as high as the governor. Uh, look, at the governor is no... He's not above the law. Uh, he's just like uh, you and I, and, uh, and if he breaks the law, he needs to be in jail. Um, at least, at, at minimum, be removed from office. But anyway, we're going to be doing these um, foreclosure um, problems. Um, and even people who have already lost their home, doesn't matter how long ago you lost it, if you lost your home for tax foreclosures or you lost your home for mortgage foreclosures, uh, we will also, we, we've written paperwork for that too, to bring these people up because they have not given you due process in a court of law. 
and uh, and there isn't even a judge's signature on it. At minimum, a judge's signature should be on it. Uh, but, uh, you know, again, people don't realize or know enough that they need to be asking for juries. But it is difficult because they don't hear you. When you walk into the courts, they have their hands on their ears as you're talking. They just will not hear you. And they will not uh, permit you to have a common law court. They will not permit you to have a, a, a trial by jury. Uh, because they know they would lose, that's why. And they get away with it. And there's only one reason why they get away with it. It's because of ignorance. You know, you've got to keep the slave ignorant. You can't allow the slave to read and write because then they're going to discover liberty and freedom. And and that's where we're at. You know, look at most people I, I see, they, they can't write very well. Um, and, uh, and and I'm not talking necessarily in a literal way, though. But it is true that people don't write very well. A penmanship is really severely terrible. Um and uh, and people don't read anymore. They tweet, you know. They don't read books. I mean, of course, some people do, but in general, most people don't. Um, people don't know what their rights are. They think they think they know what freedom is. They think freedom is the ability to be able to, you know, get up out of their bed and go outside and go where they want and go to work and come home and you know go to sleep when they want and uh, do certain things. And then they think that's liberty. That's not liberty. You know, even slaves can move around uh, on the, on the plantation. Uh, well, no difference. We're, we're slaves because we're ignorant. We don't know our rights. We don't know our unalienable rights. We don't understand that. Uh, and if you don't know your rights, you know, again, I always go back to Jefferson. If the people expect to be ignorant and free, forget about it. It's not going to happen. You can't have liberty. If you say the right words in the court and click your heels, so to speak, you can win. Uh, not really click in the heels, but, uh, you know, uh, you can win in court if you understand how things work, number one, and how to put, it's, it's almost like a chess game. You know, you gotta put that judge, uh, really into jeopardy. And, because the judge is gonna do everything he can to prevent you from winning. If you hire a lawyer, uh, and, you know, you, you generally speaking, you're not gonna win there because he's already in the game. Uh, there are exceptions to the rules, but even those exceptions to the rules, those lawyers that do try to do something, uh, they eventually could get blocked also, threatened with loss of uh, their license and uh, loss of maybe get sanctioned and everything else. Um, even though all that is illegal and it's uh, it's all just, uh, you know, it's corruption, it's RICO, um, you know, it's real tough. So you really have to learn to represent yourself. And, and again, this is not rocket science. Uh, you really just have to learn uh, the basics. You have to understand your rights, and you have to understand what jurisdiction is, what due process is, and you have to understand the basic process of moving through the courts and read the rules and follow the rules, and as much as possible uh, that you feel that it, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's proper. Uh, sometimes I don't follow their rules because I disagree with them that they think they're they're, they're repugnant in some places, and I won't follow them. And, uh, and and we'll, you just have to make your voice known in the court on why you're not going to follow that rule. Um, but I have always noticed in all, every court case I've ever been involved with, my battle has always been with the judge first. And, um, and it, you spend so much time with the judge, it's like you never get around to the case before you know it. You, you're out, outside when you can, outside the, the courthouse, because they threw the case out. Um, and it takes time to figure it out. But those of us who have figured it out... You know, we can share it with others, and uh, again, we're trying to lead people to understand these things. But it first starts with the civics course, starts with the constitutional course, starts with getting your reading. You know, read the, the Federalist Papers, uh, read uh, uh, the Constitution very, very carefully, uh, get out your dictionaries, read the, the Declaration of Independence, understand that that Declaration of Independence is a covenant with God, understand that uh, the Constitution is a covenant with our servants, understand that our unalienable rights uh, is a paper that we, the people, wrote to tell them these are the things you cannot do and shall not do. Understand that anything repugnant to that Bill of Rights, to the Constitution, is null and void. And stand on, on that process that you're going to, the, the nullific of nullification. Juries must understand the, the, the power and the authority of nullification. Uh, and when the people realize these things, that's when we'll all have liberty. And, and we don't need everyone to know it. We just need those who are involved to know it. It's a very small percentage of people just need to know it. And they need to stand up and do something about it. Okay, 
uh, what I'm going to do, uh, I don't know if I'm going to read all, every word in this thing, but uh, it's not a long paper anyway. Uh, this is the longest of the papers of the show cause that we wrote. Uh, it has not been perfected yet. I have not, not articulated it out loud, so there could be some errors in here. Uh, I'm hoping to finish this off tomorrow uh, with others to try to uh, go through it for punctuation and final uh, proper, you know, uh, wording. Uh, but we're going to kind of push through it and to give people an idea of what's involved in uh, the case concerning a foreclosure. The tax foreclosure and the mortgage foreclosure is the same scam. It's just they use the same ruse on the people. And, um, and we've discovered that ruse and laid it out. They cannot answer this paper. They just cannot do it. They've got to default. And if they default in a court of law, then they're going to have to give these people their houses back, or they're going to have to, if they're trying to take the houses away, they're going to have to leave them alone and cease and desist. They got to. There's no, they have no choice. Now, of course, they're going to fight tooth and nail to try to have this thrown out of court. I do not think that they're going to be able to do that because, again, you know, we're talking case after case after case after case under the same number, and we're going after these people for not only uh, the fact that they are going, that they are uh, not giving people their due process, and that they have changed the courts into jurisdictions unknown. We're going after these people uh, also for conspiracy, because when we get down to the bottom line on this thing, and 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 these people, and we have to go after them, and and we have to. Uh, do an indictment. That's what we're going to do is an indictment. And we're going to go after them for RICO. And we're going to go after them for conspiracy. And we're going to go after the judge in that courtroom who is the magistrate of the court, who is just the administrator of the court. He, he just signs the papers and makes everything official. That's all he does. He's the traffic cop. He doesn't get to decide. He doesn't get to make decisions. He can't do a summary judgment. The only summary judgment he can do is when we tell him to do a summary judgment to make a default because these people didn't respond and make the order and order the sheriff to go out and make sure justice is done and get to these people back their homes or leave these people alone. And, and that's how it's going to happen. Um, we're going to have a lot of people trying to say, oh, we, we, we shouldn't have to listen here because this is a court out here in, in New York and they're in Jersey or in Texas or in California or Montana or somewhere. Well, no, this is more than just a, first of all, it's a federal case. Uh, as soon as you violate someone's unalienable rights, it makes it a federal case. Second of all, it, this is connected. It's, it's, it's something happening across the entire nation. Uh, even uh, laws are being written, uh, statutes, shall I say, uh, codes uh, are being written for uh, non-judiciary, uh, 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 you know, foreclosures, and uh, and there's no such thing. You know, how can you take? You know, that's just saying we're not going to give you due process. That's all that's saying. And, and the Constitution is clear. What are you talking about? You're not giving us due process. And they're all using the same scam, so we can prove conspiracy. They're all using the same scam. Tonight we're going to reveal that scam. Um, a little bit of this does not really, because uh, this is the one we're going to look at tonight, and we're only going to look at one, we're not going to look any more in the future, uh, because it's pretty close to the same. Uh, this is maybe an additional page or two than the other, than the tax foreclosure, it's seven pages, uh, uh, but there's a lot of footnotes and, uh, and spacing, so it's not going to be that long. Uh, but the ruse is the same, that is the key. There is, and, and, and the security violations are the same. That is the key. There are certain other violations and things that take place that the mortgage companies do uh, that the towns don't do. And uh, and you have in a village, of the, uh, you know, I think it's just basically towns. I'm not sure where the villages actually do foreclosures. I've not seen that happen. All villages are inside towns, and so it's the towns, I think, that handle all this. So it's either a town fork that actually does the foreclosure. You know, they do all the collection of the taxes, and they turn your name over into the uh, uh, the county treasurer. And the county actually goes through the process of collecting all this, and that there is securitizing. And we're going to talk a little bit about that in this paper. And oh, monetizing, I'm sorry. Uh, and that we're going to talk, talk a little bit about in this paper. And um, But it's the same thing that the mortgage companies do. But the mortgage companies, well, actually the, the, the counties do it on a pretty large scale also. You know, we had a uh, uh, one we did up in uh, Greene County uh, here in New York. 
And I forget, uh, if Gerard's on the line, he can tell me the number. I don't know, about 100 cases, maybe. Um, Gerard, are you here? Maybe you can pipe in the number if you if you if you remember it. I'm just taking a guess. Uh, but they put all of the same ones. They wait to a certain part of the year. I don't know if they do it once a year or maybe maybe twice a year. And, and then what they do is they collect all these homes that they foreclose on for the taxes, and then they auction them off. They take they they take them into court. They put them all in one case, uh, one case number, uh, which is we've learned from them. That's why we're putting all our cases on one case number. You know, and uh, and then they came in and uh, and they did all of the foreclosures in one shot uh, without a signature. Uh, and you, it's, it's amazing some of the fraud that they really did in this particular case because they went far and beyond. In any event, is that your up? Any anyway, in any event, um, uh, the uh, uh, they put all these cases together. Well, we brought it, we're bringing it into federal court now, and guess what? We got a hundred and whatever cases going into federal court together, uh, because we pull the whole case together into the court. Uh, what's good for one is good for the other. Um, so they got themselves a big dilemma. Uh, they've got a lot of people they got to deal with whose homes they've stolen, or have tried to steal anyway. Uh, in this case, is these case houses have been taken, so um, they've got a big dilemma. Okay, so again, there's a few things in here that, that does deal with the mortgage companies but does not deal with the taxes, but generally most of this does. All right, uh, if this is a show cause. Again, um, we the people of the United States of America under the power and authority of the sureties of peace here in the grand jury, whereas the unified common law uh, grand juries arose out of we the people in each of the 50 states, which came together to form a unified United States common law grand jury. This was done in an effort to subdue subversion and abuse against the United States of America from enemies both foreign and domestic within our government against the people and our governments. Because of widespread ignorance and the appearance of a lawful procedure called non-judicial foreclosure without the required filing of a proof of claim, and this is extremely important, listen very carefully on this paragraph because all of these, even the IRS operates under the same situation. If you can understand this, you can defend yourself against the IRS too. Okay, Because of a widespread ignorance and the appearance of a lawful procedure called non-judicial foreclosure, uh, without the required filing of a proof of claim, that's Form 4490, and fiduciary authority, that's Form 56, for, or, or, for all in rem claims, which must also be filed in the Federal District Court of Jurisdictions, and copies of the same with notice served upon the petitioner as required to comply with the law of the land. We offer a grace period of 60 days for government officials acting under the color of law for correcting their error and for the restoring of the petitioner to their original state or defendants uh, will be brought before the grand jury for consideration of indictment for conspiracy, subversion, RICO, war against the Constitution, and other charges. Now, in, you know, in the case of the homes that have already been taken, we've altered the words, of course, a little bit because there's a past tense here and, uh, and, you know, they have to give the homes back, so we've changed some words here. But this is key here. People need to understand this. This is how the IRS takes, uh, takes you into court and, and takes your money and maybe even puts you in jail. Uh, this is where all the foreclosures take place. Even at sea, let me repeat this, even at sea, the law of the sea, when they seize a ship at sea and it's brought into port, they have to file the proper papers in port. And both of them are the same thing. They have to file the proof of claim and fiduciary authority over that which they have seized. That is so important to understand. If you understand that, you can understand what they're doing in the federal courts when they take your your money through the IRS. You can understand what they're doing in these tax courts or these courts, these kangaroo county and state courts when they come in and they do the tax foreclosures or they use uh, the mortgage companies come in and use the county or the state courts in order to take away your homes through tax foreclosure because the law requires even them at the law of the land. And you can read about this in the federal uh, rules 
concerning in rem, I N R E M. That's the process of taking a property that they lay claim upon. They must file the forms. They don't. People don't know about this, so they don't challenge it. Lawyers don't go dare to go here because they, they, they will be sanctioned. Um, I've never seen a lawyer go here. And uh, and so they take your homes right here from using and and they do not file these forms. That's the breaking of the law. They got to they you know in rem means they're going after the property and not the person. Okay, and they don't you you can't find when you when they, when they're at sea they 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 seize a pirate ship. You know you can't find the pirates to serve them to let them know. Uh, so it's, it's a process done in REM. In other words, there's no serving upon the pirate because you can't find them. And, and, but they could turn up and say, hey, that's my ship, and they can challenge it. they got every right to do that, but they have a certain period of time to do that, to challenge the in REM pr process. As a matter of fact, if you go into the federal rules, you will find that after your first day in court, your first hearing, you have 15 days to challenge in REM process once you're in the court. If you don't challenge in the in, in rem process in those first fifteen days, you've lost your your ability to make that challenge. Of course, that doesn't work in common law. For every uh, you know, for every injury, there must be a remedy. You know, when you discovered that you've been defrauded, it doesn't matter when you discovered that you've been defrauded. From that point forward, you say, "Hey, wait a second! I just realized you scammed me. Oh, too bad you didn't you didn't realize it for the past fifteen days, and now it's day sixteen, so it's too late." No, fraud is fraud. A crime is a crime. So you could deal with that. But anyway, uh, in the rules, they write this 15-day rule, uh, which we could beat, we can challenge and beat that rule, even after being convicted, losing everything you have, and going to jail and coming out. You could beat that rule, okay, uh, because you're a victim, and, uh, and, and you've been defrauded, and you've been injured. And common law says what? For every injury, there must be a remedy. It doesn't say it might be a remedy or may be a remedy or could be. No, there must be a remedy. That's the common law. Injury must have a remedy. So so you can't beat that no matter where you are. But again, if people expect to be ignorant and free, you can't have your liberty. You need to defend yourself. Don't expect another man to defend you. Get legal counsel. The Constitution tells you you can get legal counsel. It, it, it gives you the, the right, the unalienable right. Well, the Constitution doesn't give you the unalienable right. You have the unalienable right to counsel, ultimately. Uh, but the Constitution talks about the right to legal counsel, and uh, and you have that right to do that. But you should represent yourself. Or if you can't articulate things well, you can get someone to do it for you. It doesn't have to be a lawyer. Uh, but you need to control your own case. You need to understand what's going on. I'm amazed when I go into court sometime and I see people, you know, and the lawyers are up there talking. Usually it's the lawyers themselves, but there are cases I've been where the people are there and they're sitting there and they're looking around. And it's like they're oblivious to everything around. They have no idea what they're talking about. You know, they're talking about their property uh, or, or whatever it is that they're arguing. And the people aren't, you know, they're just lost in la-la land. Um and uh, keep the slaves ignorant. Remember, that's the key for them to control us. Uh, become educated, understand these things, and all of a sudden uh, the slave is no longer a slave, are they? We have to uh, understand that we're the masters and, you know, they are, they are the servants. But anyway, this REM business is important to understand. How much more, if you have to do it on the sea, how much more on the land? And if it's done on the land and they know where you live and who you are, then the, then the Constitution requires that due process. They have to they have to notify you, but they don't. And uh, how many people have gotten the paper uh, a notice of lien? And you go down to the county, there is no lien. Well, well, that's only a notice of lien, Your Honor. Uh, okay, All right. And then they move to the other side, and the case keeps going. They ignore you. Why? Because you didn't even understand what that meant. The notice of lien is really saying there's a lien in the federal court that's been filed. That's what it means. But that's the fraud because they didn't file it. Uh, the lien being filed in the court requires two forms. Proof of claim. Google this, Form 4490. That must be filed. Fiduciary authority. Form 56. Google it. That must be filed. Those two forms must be filed in order to seize your property. And because they didn't do that, they have nothing. 
but they, they get away with it. That's the fraud. And you, a fraud is a fraud. A crime is a crime. You can always go back and get it. There is no statute of limitations to common law to begin with because there are no statutes. Isn't that interesting? Which we're going to talk about in the near future, the difference between law and statutes. And people are going to be amazed how they've been living under the thumb of statutes when they really didn't have to. And the only way to defeat that is called nullification. Just say no. For people to become not knowledgeable. Okay, let's move on. Uh, let's see. We the people, people therefore demand that the defendant show cause by what constitutional authority you act that permits an action in rem against the people without proof of claim and fiduciary authority, or notify this court immediately of your error and withdrawal of your unlawful proceedings that deny due process of the petitioner, and this proceeding will be quashed. So we're giving them the olive branch. They've got the opportunity to fix the problem, do the right thing, or we're going after them. Therefore, let this action serve, first serve, to inform the defendants that a non-judicial foreclosure lacks due process of law, which is an unalienable right protected under the Fifth Amendment, and that any court permitting such a court filing procedure is acting under the color of law, which is a criminal act, and enters into a conspiracy. Non-judicial foreclosures of laws of any state, to the contrary, notwithstanding. The securitization of real property is illegal, primarily because of antitrust laws violations, constituting specific violations such as usury, fraud, conspiracy, forgery, and robo-signing. And when state and federal legislators provide unconstitutional legislation and state constitutional Constitutional courts sanction the non-judicial foreclosures by looking the other way as the victim is robbed co collectively constitutes RICO and war against the Constitution. Securitization is the financial practice of pooling various types of collateral debt, uh, contractual debt, such as residential and commercial tax foreclosures under the color of law, or other non-debt assets which generate receivables. And by the way, I'm, re I'm reading the tax foreclosure. I thought I was going to be reading the uh, mortgage foreclosure. This is a little shorter, so we'll c continue with this. <clears throat> I just saw that in that line. Which generates receivables. And selling them to a third party, which may be described as bonds, passed through securities or collateralized debt obligations called CDOs. The process is not as complicated as it might seem at first glance and might be difficult to recognize as a crime, but it should become clear to the local village, town, city, county courts, and the sheriff once they realize that these pr uh, processes are criminal and use the court and the sheriff to assist in this illegal seizures of homes, often without the realization that they became the instruments of robbery. Clarification. Were the corporate municipalities able were the court, court were the corporate municipalities able to legally foreclose on the property? They would do so by filing the foreclosure in the state court to acquire a judgment and then bring it to the sheriff for collection. A tax foreclosure in REM is an action for the recovery of a thing possessed by another. Let me repeat that because you have to understand the words of what was just said here. A tax foreclosure in REM is, and I quote, an action for recovery of a thing possessed by another. Key word here is recovery. They're claiming past ownership and they're seizing the property that they claim is theirs. They put in a proof of claim, they take fiduciary authority, they write in a fiduciary authority, and they're saying this is ours, we have a right to it, and we're, we're recovering it. You see? How is it that they think that they can recover your home that way? Even the mortgage companies can't do it that way for numerous reasons, which we don't even ever have to, we don't have to argue those points. Those, some of those points are very difficult for most people to understand until they get a little deeper into how they've set this whole system up of mortgage companies because the banks have no, 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 no lay hold on those homes. They didn't stick their hand in their own pocket to put out the money for you to buy the home. 
they went down to the Fed window and turned in your your paperwork, and and they they pulled out the the money, and with that money, uh, or the notes, shall I call it, because it's not real money. Debt really is probably a proper proper name instead of notes. It should say debt. Uh, in the dollar, it says dollar, but it's still debt. Okay, and. Uh, and and then and then well and then they receive their fee and their job is over. Yet they continue to collect the money as if it's uh, money coming to them. And they pool all this and bring it together. Anyway, they can't make those arguments, and we don't have to make those arguments either. We have to deal with the fact that they have no standing in court. And if you can show that they have no standing in court, they lose, and you walk away with your home. Whether you actually think you owe money or not, you don't owe it no more. Okay. Cannot substantiate, uh, let me go back. A tax foreclosure in REM is an action for the recovery of a thing possessed by another. End of quote. Right out of Black's Law. The problem is that municipalities cannot substantiate that they once had some interest in the real property so that they can initiate a, a lawful recovery action in REM. There are no bureaucrats willing and able on the behalf of the municipality to sign an affidavit of proof of claim and fiduciary authority. Let me repeat that. You go down to the federal courthouse and you will find these papers have not been filed. You walk into the court, you get copies of the 44, uh, 90 and the 56 and you hold them in your hand as you walk into the courthouse and you wave it on to the judge. Where are these papers? How can these homes, how come you take my home away from me? Of course, you're not getting a hearing and that's the other part of this problem. That's why we're going to do it here the way we're doing it. We're going to assist people from the standpoints of the sureties of the peace, which is the grand jury. The grand jury is making sure we're here to protect the people. That's what our job is as we the people in the grand jury. So let me finish reading this. Let me reread that part. This is so important. I'm going to go right back to the, what REM is because this is so important to understand this. If you have a home problem uh, being foreclosed on, you need to understand this. A tax foreclosure in REM is an action for a recovery of a thing pro uh, possessed by another. The problem is that the municipalities cannot substantiate that they had once had some interest in the real property so that they cannot initiate a lawful recovery action in REM. There are no bureaucrats willing and able to, on the behalf of the municipalities, to sign an affidavit or proof of claim and fiduciary authority, which is required to open an, a lawful court case to provide due process necessary for the lawful seizure of a property in REM. You see, REM can be done and can be won, even in the law of the land. But if they know where you're at, they have to serve you. And they still have to put the papers. And if you're on vacation for a year in the Bahamas or something, and you come back and you find out nine months ago they took you home and they did it in REM, all you got to do is go down to the federal court find out where they filed the papers and you'll find they didn't file no papers and go back down to the local court and well actually you need to stay in the federal court because now it's a due process problem it's a uh, violation of your fifth amendment uh, and your and your uh, and jurisdictional problem so you know you have to go to the federal court because it is a federal issue and you have to file the papers of a claim of a fraud against you because they took you home you know, they had every right to take it if they had some claim on it. And, you know, again, a recovery, okay? They have to have the recovery. But they also have to, when they bring your house into the port, so to speak, a little humor here, they bring your house into the port, they have to have the papers in order to take it home with them. More humor. But uh, in any event, you, uh, the point is, is they can't take it without the paperwork, <clears throat> even if they have the, the right to it. But there is nobody that can file that paperwork. What what uh, bureaucrat is going to file those papers? And sw these are sworn affidavit papers, by the way. They have to be a sworn affidavit. They'd be in jail because they don't have the lawful right. So the bar, banks, municipalities, and mortgage cartels devised a plan to bypass due process by lobby lobbying and convincing state legislators who either consciously conspired or because of constitutional uh, hang on a minute. Constitutional principles uh, are un, un, unbeknownst to them, ignorantly conspired to write 
unconstitutional, non-judicial foreclosure statutes that proceed in REM, which is a process to seize property without due process, whereas the party sees in the property as a legal claim and fiduciary authority. Such practice moves the presumption of law from innocence until proven guilty to guilty with no opportunity to defend. Because nobody knows how to defend this. No lawyer can defend this. No lawyer will defend this. Uh, turning American jurisprudence on its head, removing opportunity to be heard, and providing absolute control to defraud without consequence by nefarious bureaucrats, of which there seems to be no shortage of, as well as by RICO governed de facto state courts, which allow the non judicial foreclosure filing without the signature of a judge. No judge will put their signature on it. Believe me, we have... We have pressed the judge so hard to put a signature on this, and then when it was acknowledged that they would, then we did something else, and then they turned around and they stuck at us again. And that was okay, because we thought that they might do that, and we were prepared with that. So it didn't matter to us which way they went, because we knew if the judge put his signature on it, then they were going to take the, uh, take, the, take the home, and then we, of course, would bring the judge in along with the rest of the criminals and try them all in the federal courts. Um... The judge didn't put his signature on it. And, and guess what? He, he's defrauded anyway, and we still got him. Uh, and we're going to get him. Uh, we're working, that's a private case we're working on right now. In REM under international law permits the seizure of property without notification to the property owner. This makes sense and is legal under international law at sea dealing with pirates. But the law of the land, also known as the Supremacy Clause of the Constitution, requires due process for people, uh, uh, for people are not pirates, nor at sea. Um, and then I'll just read the Supremacy Clause. The con this Constitution, and, and this, is, this is important here now, okay? This is the supreme law of the land. This Constitution and the laws of the United States, which shall be made in pursuant thereof, and all treaties made, or which shall be made under the authority of the United States, shall be the supreme law of the land. And the judges in every state shall be bound thereby. Anything in, this, in the Constitution of the laws or the laws of any state, to the contrary, notwithstanding. And that's Article 6. Congress... <coughs> cannot make laws that would provide for a statutory construction which would negate the unalienable rights of we the people, which is what would be required in order to make a state a non-judicial foreclosure state, and therefore no state can establish a non-judicial foreclosure laws. Such con con congressional and or state action would negate the following unalienable rights protected by the Constitution and expected to be enforced by the sheriff. The unalienable right to protection of the Fourth Amendment to be secured from property seizures. The unalienable right protected by the Fifth Amendment of due process. The unalienable right protected by the Seventh Amendment to the right by trial, trial by jury. The unalienable right protected by the Seventh Amendment to common, to common law courts. Rights are unalienable and cannot be transferred. Any contract that would pass or hand over an unalienable right is null and void. The burden of proof is on the foreclosing party. All parties to a non-judicial foreclosure cannot prove their case, nor can they prove their right to sell anyone's property without progressing to a final judgment in a court of law. Any court that ignores these facts and or proceeds with a summary judgment becomes complicit to the robbery and violates the victim's right under the color of law, thereby giving reason to move the case for cause into an Article III federal uh, district court for both criminal and civil remedies. White-collar criminals, after establishing unconstitutional statutes, thereby acting under the color of law, devising the following ruse to manipulate our judicial system and our, prop and our county sheriffs so as to create an appearance of lawful acts while illegally seizing the property of their victims. One, they give notice of the default of the victim, uh, to the victim without judicial process. Two, they give a, sub a substitution of trustee without judicial process. Three, they give notice of sale without judicial process. Four, they commence public uh, auction without judicial process. Five, they use aforesaid documents to transfer the title without judicial process. 
1996, they filed fraudulent evictions proceeding acting as a landlord under the fraudulent title and calling the owner of the property property tenant who owes back rent in an unsuspecting village, town, or city court, given the appearance of judicial process. And seven, file the fraudulent judgment with the county clerk to achieve a fraudulent eviction order for execution by the unsuspecting sheriff. We the people find it apparent that most of the constitutional officers are ignorant to the law of the land, as defined in the Constitution for the United States of America, Article 6, and therefore are often unable to determine constitutional violations, which place sheriffs prey to the minions of the subversive bar in jeopardy of violating their oaths. And we the people in jeopardy of losing our property and liberty to tyrants. The formal notifications of crime directs directs the participating court to honor their oaths and protect the victims uh, from the following rules. One, notice of default. Failing to file the affidavit of default, providing adherence to due process con constitutes fraud. Trustee substitution, federal offense. Assuming fiduciary authority with filing f without, file without filing a federal form 56, uh, within the federal district constitutes fraud. Notice of sale, federal offense. Acting on a claim without filing a federal form 4490 within the federal district court, uh, court uh, constitutes fraud, and that's, that's the proof of claim. Title transfer, federal offense. Transferring title without due process constitutes fraud. Any court that provides a summary judgment enters into a conspiracy under the color of law and escalates the crime to RICO. Eviction, federal offense. Any court granting an eviction being fully informed of the conspiracy to defraud enters into the conspiracy. Dispossession by federal, is a federal offense. Any sheriff ex executing a court order to evict after being fully informed of the conspiracy enters into the conspiracy. Doesn't matter whether they understand it. Doesn't matter whether they, they agree or not. They're guilty of these crimes. Statutory crimes violated by the aforesaid ruse under the law, laws are RICO, usury, fraud, conspiracy, forgery, robo-signing, antitrust laws violations. Therefore, on behalf of the petitioner, you see, we're going to take people who are petitioning us to help them because they're being violated. And we, the grand jury, the unified United States common law grand jury, being the sureties of the peace, have a duty to help these people. Therefore, on behalf of the petitioner, the Unified United States Common Law Grand Jury demands that the court of the non-judicial foreclosure filing in good faith, faith do your duty and protect the victims of these crimes by removing all said violating, uh, filings immediately, cease from all non-judicial foreclosure practices, and notify this court of the same. We further demand that the said bureaucrat defendants withdraw said filings from the court of filing cease all non-judicial foreclosures filing and notify this court immediately. <clears throat> wherefore, the most important paragraph of the entire paper is always in the wherefore clause. That's not necessarily true because you have to prove your case and everything else, but you have to tell the court what you're, what you're expecting to, to, be, to be done, and that's the wherefore clause. If the defendant's default, this court will be moved for an order to cease and desist their subversive activities, restore the petitioner to their original state before the misuse of justice under the color of law, and be, put, be brought before the full grand jury for consideration of indictment for conspiracy, subversion, RICO, war against the Constitution, and other charges. And that brings us to the end uh, of the paper. And we do intend on indicting in these cases, and we're working, before we actually do the indictments, uh, we are working to try to tie a relationship with the uh, uh, United States uh, Attorney General up there in Washington, uh, for us down there in Washington. And uh, and we're expecting him to do his due diligence in law, following the law. We're expecting him to work with us, and we're going to notify the President of every communications we have with this individual. We're going to ask for prosecutors 
to come in and prosecute these cases. We're going to bring these uh, indictments right inside our court case because they won't take our, our indictments outside. You know, we can file an indictment and they just brush it off. They don't care. We're going to file it inside this case uh, because extraordinary circumstances require and calls for extraordinary responses and activities, and that's what we're going to do. Uh, these are extraordinary times, and we have to do extraordinary things. So these cases here, uh, again, uh, anybody who is in a situation where they have already lost their home or they're in the process of losing their home, whether it be for a tax foreclosure or for a, uh, um, uh, what do you call it, a mortgage foreclosure, but everything we're doing at this point has to focus in on winning in the court, getting ourselves into the court, getting some wins and getting some, some prosecuting going, getting some indictments and getting some people prosecuted, because that's what's going to empower us to move further in and deeper into the courts and get the authority and the recognition that we the people deserve as the consenters of government through the grand jury, which arises out of the people, not from the courts, it arises out of the people, it's separate from the courts, United States versus Williams, everyone should have read that by now. If they haven't, they should. It's up on our website. One of the most important papers for us to read and understand the power and the authority to lead the people to consent to government through the courts and take injustice back into our courts. So we need to understand those papers. But again, it all starts with a framework. You know, you have to have a framework, and that's why we put together those two courses. But you see, building these cases is building a conspiracy we're going to show this is not just something here in New York, in this little location, in this court or two. No, this is something in every court here in the United States is doing the same thing. That's a conspiracy. And when you can show this, you're doing the same rules and using the same processes and, cre and doing the same, the same process uh, of fraud upon the people. When you can show that, you've proven it's a conspiracy. You only need to show that between two or three people. We can show that between... Thousands of people, depending on how many people, you know, are become aware of what we're doing and work, come to us to work with us to help them, and they help us. Together, we work together to help ourselves to save this nation, because this is what's going to get us in and springboard us and go after these people for conspiracy. And once we start putting these judges in jail, once we start putting these even bad prosecutors in jail, if necessary, we'll go after them too. And once we start putting these mortgage companies, bankers in jail, that's that's when we're going to get our nation back and we bring the king of the court back in. So there you go. I don't need to add a whole lot more to that. If you'd like more information, would like to get started on that, click the link below in the description. And if you don't see it right off the bat, click the link show more just down below. And that will direct you to uh, the application forms that we'll have available for you at no cost and you'll be able to uh, deal directly with the National Liberty Alliance on that basis. We highly recommend that you bolster yourself with knowledge, education, and support. And of course, that comes with your Lighthouse Law Club membership. You can never have too much knowledge. So that's it for me for today. I hope this will benefit you, and let's get on the move, people. It's time. This is our time. Take care. God bless.